Alright guys, breakfast on day two is going to be cauliflower cream of wheat. Recipe will be linked in the description box below. Coffee, which I just do 130 milliliters of cashew milk, two like squirts of stevia chocolate drops, and then one packet of Trivia, and then coffee. And then here I have three Phoenix by Legion, two fish oil, four creatine, uh, calcium, magnesium, zinc, multi iron i go over my supplements in my supplement video that i will link down below and then i also had pa7 which i mentioned in yesterday's video i took five of these uh, about 30 minutes ago and now i'm about to eat this so you're supposed to take this about a half hour before your carb dense meal to have it work effectively day one which you are doing today you are actually training this workout today so happy monday happy day one of the video trainer program this just uploaded so it's actually saturday right now and i'm putting that up for you guys and i'm about to eat this deliciousness so i will see you guys at the gym what's up guys day two of this video trainer program 30 day kickstart push day today so push means chest, shoulders, and triceps because all the movements are a pushing movement. So I just wanted to say that I had two rice cakes on the way here after my breakfast. So I'm doing a full day of eating today. So I'm gonna include everything I eat, but I had two plain rice cakes and then this is my pre-workout drink. It is a sweet tarts flavor pre-workout. Tastes exactly like sweet tarts. It's a brand called Danger Zone. I got it at the New York Fit Expo that Emily Hayden was at this past weekend and it was just a small brand and it tasted amazing so I ended up getting the discounted like tub so let's get in there push day let's kill it day two my legs are so freaking sore guys like literally I didn't do a single glute isolation exercise my ass is so sore if you're dying of soreness the day after the leg day tomorrow that's okay let's get in there push day all right guys so I'm without a cameraman for just a little bit he's on his way he's a little late but I just want to show you guys what I have here for the workout so if you guys have this printed out as well you'll realize that the drop sets are not listed on the blank version so I just made a little note this DSES -E means drop set every set drop set every set and then I just bracketed these two together because they're the super set so I would suggest just making little notes like that on your blank version that you're printing out so you don't forget during the workout. And uh, I'm gonna warm up my rotator cuffs and then get started. So what I do before every single upper body day is I warm up my rotator cuff in my shoulder and my elbow joints and just get the blood flowing so that I'm not injuring myself or risking any injury. I have a video on exactly what I do and why. Link down in the description box below. It'll be labeled like rotator cuff warm up or something, but I'm gonna do that. And then we're gonna jump into the acclimating sets before the first exercise. Just like I said yesterday, you wanna ease yourself into that first exercise because you're not totally warmed up yet. So it's sets of 12 for standing dumbbell overhead press. So I'm gonna do like a couple acclimating sets with lighter weight before I jump into those three working sets of 12, if that makes sense. And I'm gonna show you guys acclimating sets and working sets and then we'll, we'll be rolling. So standing dumbbell shoulder press, how you're gonna perform this exercise. 
Kind of get it up to your shoulders here. Core is tight, butt is back, chest is out, shoulders are retracted, the dumbbells are at your ears. They come all the way up, and then you bring them back down to your ears. You don't relax down here. You keep the tension right here on your shoulders. Got nine with the 25s and then dropped to 20s so that I could finish and I just did four. So that was a 10 because I did not complete the sets. Very frustrated. So I used the 25s, got 12, 12, nine, and then did 20 by four. RPE 10, let's move on to chest press. All right, real quick guys, I'm gonna show you how to get into the starting position safely and effectively and out of your flat dumbbell chest press as well safely especially if you're trying to go heavy so you're gonna bring it into your hip crevice right here so you want it all the way against your body you're holding on to the dumbbells nice and tight and you're getting set what you're gonna do is you're gonna lay down slowly with the dumbbells on your torso then turn your elbows out and press and that's your first rep right there With form here, you can arch your back, you don't have to, either way is fine. Feet are planted firmly on the ground, butt never leaves the bench. When you're done, turn your wrists, bring your knees up, and use the dumbbells as leverage to sit back up. So you bring your knees up. Let me just demo that one more time. Turn, knees up, sit up like that. Then you can just get the dumbbells down off your knees instead of like something like this, where you're here at the top, and then you're like, oh, what do I do? And then you just drop them on the sides. Um, it's much better. You probably just got like the best double chin angle there, but it's a lot safer to do it this way because then you're not putting your shoulder into that compromised, stretched position. So I'm all about preventing injury. So I think that's definitely the safest way that you can set up and get out of that movement, um, especially when you're going heavy. So give that a try and let me know in the comments below if it helps you. That was 12, a very, very forced 12, and I don't even know if I was hitting parallel. I guess the video will tell if I was actually going all the way down. If I wasn't, then like, I mean guys, that's a 10. <laughs> Push myself too hard. Next time I'll do 32 and a half. Actually, I could probably get 35s when I'm fresh, but that's not today. Uh, anyways, so let's move on. Dumbbell lateral raises drop set on every single set, so I'll show you what that looks like. All right guys, so dumbbell lateral raises, we're doing a drop set every set. So I'm starting with 12s here and I'm gonna drop to eights. So lateral raises, elbows come up, wrists do not come above the elbows and the elbows do not come above the shoulders. So it should look like this, not like this. So 15 reps. Controlled, dragging from the elbow.
drop 30 to 40 percent of the weight, it's a failure. With these lateral raises, guys, try to bring your pinkies up. Someone told me once, beginning of my fitness journey, they told me when you're doing a lateral raise, pretend like you're holding a pitcher of water. Come up and pour the pitcher. And I thought that was the cutest thing ever, but I always think of that every time I do a lateral raise. It helps bring your elbow up, contract the lateral delt as you bring that up, instead of just keeping your wrist straight. You don't get that full contraction. All right, so we're doing a cable ombre row, super set with a cable overhead press. And so I'm using a wide grip attachment here just because I have long arms, so it's awkward for me to be like this and like pressing and rowing. So I'm gonna take a little bit of a wider grip and do what feels best for you. Standing close, shoulders back, chest up. Bring the elbows up to parallel with your shoulder. So your elbow stays above your wrist the entire time. We're switching gears to the overhead press. Go a little bit lighter for this. I'm gonna start here. Oh God, 10 reps. <clears throat> oh shit, that was half. Guys, this is hard. Don't be afraid to just go light. Five more. A quick snapshot so you can see what I've written so far 50 20 etc notice guys how I'm like controlling not only the up but I'm like controlling it down as well keeping tension as I come down and maybe I was talking to stall between the supersets, you'll never know. Okay, so this is seated alternating front raise from parallel. So what that means is you're gonna start at parallel at the top of the front raise, and you're gonna alternate. You raise it all the way above your head. Ten per arm. Okay. Three. Three. Finish off. Maybe we'll use fives for this whole thing. Who knows? And there's a drop set every set, so because I couldn't do all 10 and because five is the lowest weight we have here, the drop set is gonna be what's called a mechanical drop set. So this isn't in the program, but 
you gotta make adjustments when you have to. So a mechanical drop set is when you drop, uh, usually you would drop the weight as well, but because I don't have a lower weight, I'm gonna drop and change the method of which I'm doing this front raise. So I'm gonna drop set to normal seated front raises instead. Same thing as the lateral raise for the pitcher. So that is a mechanical drop set, which is what I'm gonna be doing for this exercise because that was really freaking hard. <laughs> so I found these two and a half pound plates. So I'm actually gonna do, for the, for the final set, I'm gonna do an actual drop set and keep doing those seated alternating front raises from parallel. So I am dropping 50% of the weight because we are at a, such a low weight already. So, as you can see, there's just multiple ways that you can perform this drop set if this exercise is too hard for you, like it is for me. <laughs> so, here we go. Next up is going to be pec deck chest flies. So I like to put my hands here and use the uh, base of my hand so that I'm not like flailing my wrist back. And you're going to get your shoulders retracted, back, chest out. Feel the stretch before you even start. And bring the elbows together. 12 reps. So I'm gonna give that one a 10 too. Okay, I'm just pushing myself like a little bit too much with everything today. Um, I really wanted to get that last, last two reps out to hit 12, so I started leaning forward a little bit and using some body language. Um, but that's definitely a 10. I did not keep perfect form the entire time. All right, so heck deck rear belt flies, guys. So I like to set up with this one kind of similar to the chest press or chest fly. I use the outside of my hand here and I don't really like to grip this so much. So I'm actually just pushing out this way instead of like gripping down, if that makes sense. So chest is on the pad, shoulders retracted, and you're pushing out and back. Control it on the way back. Lead with the elbow about dragging your elbows behind you just a little bit. You want to come just behind parallel with your torso. So that's 12, your rear delt is this muscle right here behind your armpit. So when you're coming back, you should feel it squeeze right in here. 
as you come back. So that's why you're leading with the elbow. You don't want to do this with your arm because what does this do? This does nothing. This works your tricep. You're moving from this out. So this is all one piece and your shoulder joint is what's moving, if that makes sense. So right in here is where you should feel that burn. Oh, also, are you recording? Yeah. If you are shorter, if you if this seat comes all the way up and you still can't really like get your chest to the top here, sometimes I actually do this. I'm five six and I still do this sometimes. I'll actually bring the seat all the way down. I'll actually just stand here, put my chest right at the top, and kind of lean into it, and just stand as I do it. And sometimes this is just more comfortable for me depending on the day. All right, so this is what we got today. I just put a little note that I did a push day three days ago, so I'm not fresh, I'm not my strongest today. And then uh, drop set every set. I did a mechanical drop set for most of the sets for this exercise, the seated alternating front raise from parallel. Just to show you guys what I'm logging here, I did like 12 reps on the third set of dumbbell chest press. Like I wrote barely because like I really, if you saw in that clip, I was forcing it out. I was barely hitting parallel with my elbow. Wherever I had to drop the weight, I actually wrote. So I started with 30 pounds, I got five reps, and then I did 20 pounds, I got five more reps. So that was all in one set, but it's just a way that I like to log it in to just let myself know that I tried it and it was too hard. That was day two. I hope you guys had a great workout today. One more thing I wanna add, it does say on the notes on the non-printable version here, Keep your rest time short. So for this workout, it's supposed to go by fast. It's supposed to be a fast tempo. So keep your rest from about 45 seconds to a minute between sets maximum. Just wait long enough to where you're feeling antsy, ready to go again. Enough time to where your muscles have some time to recover, but not so much that you're like getting cold or bored between sets. So guys, if you're with a friend at the gym, make sure you're managing your rest time. Don't be talking forever and ever between sets because Honestly, training with a partner can be beneficial, but a lot of times it can be an excuse to slack off. So make sure you're managing your rest times and holding each other accountable if you're with someone. Be like, okay, it's time for our next set. Like, let's not bullshit, let's not mess around here. I'm your training partner and your training partner with you at the gym should push you just as much as I'm trying to push you through this video. Training partners are great, but just make sure you're pushing each other really, really hard um, to get the most out of that session with each other. So I am finishing off with 30 minutes of cardio again today. So that was day two, push day, kill it you guys. Have a great rest of your day guys. Talk to you tomorrow. Post-workout meal is some potatoes, Brussels sprouts, and chicken. This is uh, the meal that I made, the meals that I made when I was doing pre-programmed series number four and I just heated it up, threw it out onto a plate from the Tupperware and that is my post-workout meal. Post-workout guys, you wanna have a little bit lower fats um, higher protein, higher carbs, so lots of chicken, potatoes, and Brussels sprouts there. Meal number two after my workout today is this meal dealer's steak and carrot, potato, onion, saute, and grilled broccoli or roasted broccoli or whatever. This meal is absolutely delicious and it's 10 fat, 39 protein, and like 29 carb or something and it's super good so you can use the code marissa to get meal dealers for 15 percent off at checkout if you live in dc maryland or virginia or philly or lancaster pennsylvania so check meal dealers out i'll link them down below make sure to try this meal out if you haven't already because steak is just the steak is just so fucking good <laughs> now i'm having two rice cakes because i'm feeling snacky so four total today all right guys, so here's my protein ice cream. I like to sit in the freezer for a little while so it freezes over on top 
and it's made with Core Nutritionals Iso Chocolate Peppermint Bark. It has no lactose, so dairy intolerant people can have it, and it's like my absolute favorite protein ever. I have it every single day, so you can get this from Fairfax Nutrition Corners, my discount if you want. The info for that and the recipe for the protein ice cream will be down in the description box below. What's up you guys? So today is actually the next day, but I just wanted to say that that wasn't a full day of eating. I know, I suck guys. It was not a full day of eating. I actually had the protein ice cream and then I ended up watching Netflix with my boyfriend for a really long time and then we just stayed up late. I had a packet of maple brown sugar oatmeal right before bed, but I didn't film it because I was like delusionally tired and I ended up being a lot lower on my fats than I should have been and everything else I hit. So I was actually under all my macros yesterday. Nothing I can do about that now. I might increase my fats today to make up for that decrease yesterday so that my weekly average macros stay the same. Um, so that's something that you guys could do if you mess up one day, you can average it out the next. But if it's gonna be something where you like totally blew it and you would have to eat nothing to make it up the next day, I don't recommend that. I recommend if you messed up like a tiny bit and you wanna just make that small adjustment, that's okay. If you went over like 100 grams of carbs or 50 grams of carbs or something, don't cut 100 grams of carbs out of your next day. It's not a good idea. Really, really not. So just be reasonable with yourself. If you really messed up, then like just accept it and move on and start the next day fresh. But if it's just a small change that you can make, then that's something that you could probably do. Um, anyways, this is way too long of a clip, but... <laughs> I just had a packet of oatmeal before I went to bed, and that's all. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys uh, today for poll day. Bye.